Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. The World Health Organization reports that the rate of suicide has doubled since the onset of COVID-19, claiming the life of one person every 20 seconds in the world. 988 is a new national hotline number to help save lives. We talk with Dr. Renee Pentikoff about this new hotline and other ways to prevent suicides and save lives. But Dr. Pentikoff, it's great to have you back on Inside Healthcare. Can you tell us a little bit about this 988 hotline and, and what it's all about? Yeah, we're all just as mental health professionals are all really excited about the 988 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. It is a new, brand new, launched in July, three digit access number. Um, not to necessarily replace the previous 1 800 number, but to allow for an easier to remember number for folks when they are in need of support. I was going to ask why was it created? And that's partly the, I, I, the main reason, isn't it? Yeah. Easier for people yeah. to remember. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I have some, some of my own hypotheses about why they picked 988, but um, it's, it's hard to misdial probably, right? With the two different numbers and easy to remember and a little bit like 911, I'm not sure. I'm just, just my own theories. But the 1-800 number will still be in effect. Um, the 273-8255 number that people are used to for the lifeline, that will be um, forever in, um, in the works as well as the 988 number. But it's just really exciting to have this easier to remember number. Why well, yeah. important to have this and it's 24 seven, no matter where you live in the country. Yes, it's 24 seven, no matter where you live. The lifeline has been available and around for, oh, so, uh, you, since 2005 actually. And the lifeline is manned by, um, or the crisis workers are skilled and knowledgeable and supportive. And, and what's really interesting too, and I didn't know this until recently, there's also a lifeline chat that if you go on the website and you wanna just get some support and you're not necessarily in crisis, you can go on the web chat and just type in and kind of have a chat conversation with a crisis worker at Lifeline too, to get some support and some ideas and some resources. And there are 200 crisis Lifeline centers across the country. Um, and so several of them are very localized and then they have some um, knowledge and awareness of local resources then too. And um, health professionals like yourself know that um, suicide is preventable and that things like the hotline and other training people might be surprised to realize that it is preventable and yeah. and what can we do to make it preventable for these yeah for someone in a suicide crisis yeah 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 suicide is preventable it's one of the leading causes of death especially of young people it's the second leading cause of death of uh, adolescents and young adults across the country. Um, the good news is that it is presentable, like a preventable, excuse me, like you said. And the, the number one way to prevent suicide is to be brave and courageous and talk to each other about it. And we can learn these skills. One of the um, programs that I have facilitated is called QPR. It's question, persuade, and refer which is what QPR stands for. Their website is qprinstitute.com if people wanna check it out. Um, and in the QPR training that I do, um, people come away learning how to ask really the really hard questions when someone they care about or someone that they know might seem to be acting differently. So you learn the signs to watch for in people that you care about um, and you learn how to ask the hard question are you thinking about suicide? Have you thought about suicide? Really hard question to ask. People are scared to say the word suicide, but what we know from the research is when we ask people if they're struggling and if they're having thoughts of suicide, Jody, they actually experience a decreased level of stress when we just ask the question. And then in QPR, the P stands for persuade. 
um, in the training, the QPR gatekeeper training that I facilitate. Um, we teach how to persuade someone to get help and then how to help them um, and refer them, that's the art, to getting resources and support. One of those resources you provide counseling for a number of individuals and, and various various issues that are dealing yes, with. That. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, and, and like I said, when people do get referred um, and when people are open and able to talk about their struggles, their depression, their life stressors, and their suicidal thoughts, they get better, right? And that's, that's the most important thing. We get people the help that they need. Mm -hmm. Save lives. Final comments for our viewers and if they want some information about the QPR or other um, training and things like that, where should they go? Yeah, well, I am one of the co-founders of the Suicide Prevention Collaborative and we sponsor, we sponsored many, many QPR trainings. We're actually doing one today for the Washington County Attorney's Office. So that's really exciting. Um, and Suicide Prevention Collaborative has a website. SPC is suicidepreventioncollaborativemn.com. You can also get a lot of resources from NAMI and NAMI Minnesota, that's N-A-M-I. And of course, the lifeline that we just referenced, the three digit, or excuse me, where did I put this? Um, the website for the new three digit access 988 is 988lifeline.org. There's so many resources on there too for people to kind of learn some skills and strategies if you're worried about somebody who's struggling to get them help. Dr. Penikoff, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on Inside Healthcare and always great information. And oh, so thank, thank you, you for having me, Jody, and thank you for all the good work that you do.